Arch Linux, Vim, Obsidian, oh my. Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Brian Jenks. And I was asked, what are my key bindings in Obsidian? How do I approach that? What are, what are my bindings and why? And what do I have set up? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And how I sort of think about my key bindings from my background with Linux, with Vim, and that whole spiel. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's dive right in. So in Obsidian, I also use a large amount of plugins. So a lot of the key bindings work with the plugins and some of them, some of these key bindings may also be default. I'm not 100% sure on, on which ones are the defaults or not, but in any case, um, I just took screenshots of all of my key bindings. Otherwise I have to go back and forth over and over again, but I came from Arch Linux to this MacBook for school for a lot of other reasons, but I still really, really like Arch Linux and Vim, Vim for everything. So I actually have a particular way of thinking about my key bindings. When in Vim, you have what's called text motions and just the key bindings make sense. Like when you think of copying a line of text in Vim, like for instance, um, I could have a line, let's just open up a brand new um, document here. So I could have a line of text like, uh, hello world. And we might wanna move that line there. So in Vim, you don't just copy a link. And you know, that might actually be a good key binding, control C or command C, copy. But in Vim, you actually have text motions. So I could say, um, two Y's, yank, yank, because in Vim, Y is for yank, and then P for paste. There we go. Now, one other really useful thing is you can also use text motions and, for instance, J, H, J, K, L are the two are the four um, key bindings to move things around. So H, uh, yeah, H, J, K, L, and in that way you're able to move around. So and you can also add numbers for modification of your action, your verb, and then your actual motion. So in this case, I'm going to yank one line down. So that's Y one J. So it will look like Y one J. And what that looks like here, Y one J. And now if I paste that here with P paste, there you go. So this semantic way of thinking about your key bindings as actual operations, actions, you can remember them better because you're thinking, uh, I'm not thinking copy and paste. I'm thinking, okay, I want to yank four letters to the right. So that's L. Now I can just say paste. There we go. That's actually, <laughs> um, but in that way, you're able to think about a language of text manipulation. I can think of, I want to um, D capital G. I want to delete to the bottom of the document. And then I want to go to the top GG. Then I want to delete that line DD. I want to change this line, not delete it. So I'm going to do capital C changes, whatever. And oh, I want to select the whole thing, VIW, uh, visual mode for the inner word. And then I want to change the case. So I'm going to do a tilde. And in this way, you're able to easily think of a language of text manipulation. This is why I really love Vim. And I used Vim and a tiling window management system in Arch Linux. So I was using i3. Really what this means is I come from a background where you're launching terminals, command windows, manipulating everything with the keyboard, and you have this semantic way of thinking about key bindings from Vim. And I try to apply this as much as possible to using Obsidian with primarily the keyboard only. And some of my key bindings reflect this like C for copy or V for paste, because I just, I'm familiar with that. But certain other things are, I try to emulate a little bit more with Vim. So what we have, I'm just gonna go down the list. So quick switcher plus plus is the same thing. It's the quick, it's the open up a document but it also has one extra feature where if you do an ampersand, it'll actually, or the at symbol, it'll actually let you see like a structure of documents by, you know, looking at uh, something that looks like that. It's more aesthetically pleasing. And it's just really, it's just opening up a new launcher. And that is a plugin. Um, we also have jump to link. So a good example of that, um, let's do this one. Now you can see a bunch of links in here. If I do a control and then a uh, apostrophe or, Yes, apostrophe. 
it'll actually highlight the links. This is sort of like Vim Easy Motion, if you're familiar with that, but it's not, it's only on the links instead of all of the text and doing a search um, string of text. But in any case, it's actually, it is useful because then I can just do E and I'm easily traversing links sort of like uh, Easy Motion in Vim. It's only for links, but you know, it gets the job done. Um, next, I have, let's see, Note Refactor. I believe I've showed this one before, but I'm using uh, Option Shift C and Option C for these. So if I open the same document I have, actually let's open Space Repetition. Now, if I go to, uh, that's a thing here. If I go to here and I can say, hey, all of this text right here, option C. And now this is going to prompt me say, hey, what is the name of the note you want to add that text to? And we're going to say uh, YouTube testing. And there we go. So now that text is gone. It's no longer there. It's just a link to that name we gave. And now there's a new file with that name and the text within it. Now, this might not be something that you want to do. For instance, one thing you can do, let me fix my uh, note here. If you want to say, take an entire heading and let's do, put that back. Let's actually add a heading to this uh, management there. So we also wanna add a heading and we wanna say, this is the heading. Now we have a heading in there, we have some content. Let's just say, hey, we're breaking up a large note with the same plugin, Note Refactor, I can do Option Shift C, basically I'm thinking copy, and it can just say, hey, Option Shift C, that doesn't even ask me for a prompt because it assumes that heading is the new file name, and that's how we've treated it. And in that way, it's easy to easily refactor notes and create new notes from existing material if you're trying to break something apart. And I personally thought that that was a really useful approach. Some of these I'm not gonna be able to show you just because they involve my daily notes, and I'm not going to be showing my daily notes on here, but I use the day planner, which is this really awesome uh, planning view in here. And uh, also I have the calendar plugin, but basically uh, the daily planner um, hotkey, which is, I just do control P, you know, for planner, then this actually will link this planning to whatever current note I'm on, which it would be my daily note because I choose to do that on a daily basis. And this is the plugin or the key binding for that. In my templates video that I can put a card somewhere up there, uh, and I made a video about all about templates and to insert a template, I'm using the hotkey uh, command shift I, or if you're on Windows, it'd be like control shift I. And this is using the templater plugin because I also have some shell commands I might also want to run. So if I do control shift I, this will actually let me insert templates. So I could do meta and insert my general template for new seedling notes. And that is uh, inserting templates. I also have uh, pasting a URL into selection and I use command shift V for this one because I'm thinking like command V or control V is paste, but command shift V is like super paste, which is what I, I wanted. So for instance, what you could do is you could do www.google. Actually, let's just do my website. There, there's my website. And let's just take that and say, hey, Brian's website. If I select all this text and do command shift V, now that text is now a hyperlink, a markdown hyperlink to my own website. If I render that, there you go. And that is markdown paste over selection. And that is a also a plugin. I use a lot of plugins. So a lot of these are about plugins. Um, the next one I have is embedding a current block into my workbench. This is really useful for when you're building this. This is my workbench file in here. So actually let's just delete this line and use a better example. So let's do space repetition. And let's say I want to add this line. I'm building up a note on space repetition stuff. I want to grab some stuff from this note, some stuff from another note. I could do option E, and now you can see it made the block reference hash. Let me have a notification. It's now here, but then you can see space repetition is when we stimulate our memory, all that stuff. So now I can go to the workbench file and okay, there's a block there. It's transcluded, so we can do that. And there's the whole block. It just immediately sent to my workbench. You could stack up these blocks and then there you go. You can start writing your note from all these collected materials into one single file and then go from there. Really useful. The next ones I have are about adding items to review later. So I do have the review plugin. I really like Ryan Murphy's plugins. So the review plugin will say, hey, take this block, transclude it into the next day's daily note. But actually, it also uses natural language processing. So I could say in three days, and it will three days from now on that daily note, create the daily note if it doesn't exist, and then add those things as rep block references to that daily note. Really, really useful plugin for reminders. 
Now, I'm not going to show you that in action because I don't want to show my daily notes, but really, really useful plugin. Um, next one is Cycling Through Panes. This is useful for those of us who use primarily the keyboard. And let's say I want to open up a bunch of extra notes. So I could say, hey, let's open up uh, a workbench. And now you can see I'm still on space repetition. Workbench is over here. But if I did Control Tab, it now takes me to this, this one. And this actually lets me easily maneuver through my notes by letting me tab through all of them. And then I can use my hotkeys with Command Option arrow keys to traverse all of these notes in a semantic and in order way. This is very easy and really awesome. The next really useful key binding that I have bound is Option, or in this case, if you're on Windows, Alt, up and down arrow keys. This is used to swap lines up and down. And I think this is a really useful feature because I see this often in a lot of code editors and it's really useful. Like for instance, if I wanna move this uh, little hashtag here, I could do Option, up arrow, and I can move it around uh, or move it down here. And this is really great for, because it, you can do it on more than one, just one line. So for instance, I could easily just take all of this right here and just shift that up in the document. Really easy just to move text around instead of having to cut, cut, paste, enter, add, move. It's just shift it up. And that's really, really easy. And you just bind the, um, the hotkey to those two actions, swap line up or down. That's core functionality. The next three are for dealing with files. And now, for instance, this one is currently in edit mode. That's why you see all the brackets and everything. But I can do, in my case, Alt or Option Preview, or Option P for Preview, and now it's in Preview mode. If I want to close this note, I can do um, Command W, which closes the note. And let's actually open up a brand new note, which is Command Shift N. I will get to that one. So now I have this new note called Untitled. Now the uh, key of binding I have to delete these notes is Command Backspace. I think that might actually might be a default from Obsidian, but now. That note is deleted and it's gone. Next, I have a few more that deal with tasks, new notes, and filtering or searching. So if I wanna make a new note, I can do Command-Shift-N to make that new note in a brand new pane. But if I did Command-N, you can see that it added a one here because now I just made a, another new note. So we open up a new pane. Now, I also want to say add some task items. So I wanna have a task. I could do Control and then Backtick, and now I have a new task and say, hey, task. But the task is complete. I can also use command or uh, control backtick to mark it as complete and toggle its status. If there's something on this line that doesn't actually have um, the syntax for a tag, it will actually add it and then complete it. And it will, it will even work on blank lines as well. So that is the command, the control backtick. And I don't think that's from a plugin. Um, I guess just built-in functionality for toggling a checklist. Now, next, what happens if I want to search for something? So I want to search for this note untitled. I could do Command Shift F for like filter, and I'm going to do untitled. And it will actually find, you know, the untitled note, which is this note. So in that case, I can also say, I could say, oh yeah, there it is. Command backspace, get rid of it and delete it. And those are some of these ones. Now, I also have two for graph view. So if I did command G for graph, it'll actually open up the local graph for command G because I'm more likely to use that one in a, a small pane like this. So when I might, I might want to also open up the whole graph, which is command shift G, you know, a larger graph, and that would be opened up this way. And I think this is a really great way of mapping this because I always think like, yeah, graph, uh, command G. And there we go. There's my graph. Getting down to the last ones here. I use command P for the command palette. So that's what I think of command P. And now it opens up all of these commands I have access to. I don't have to use that too much because I have most of the things I want bound to keys that I remember. Um, command T opens up today's note, my daily note. I'm not going to do that, obviously, because I'm not showing off my journal. And the previous note and then the next day's note are command shift Y for yesterday and T for tomorrow. Command T is for today. Command Shift T is for tomorrow, and Command Shift Y is for yesterday. But I also use Control uh, Left and Right arrow keys to go into the next and previous day's notes. And then the last and final one is Command Enter for opening workspaces. This is almost intuitive for me because when I was using Arch Linux, I would open up new windows by using Meta Enter, which in that case was like the Windows key, or in this case, the Command key. Command Enter opens up my workspaces. For instance, my workspace for my graph. And that's typically what I will also use for the graph, not just Command-G. And 
yeah, those are my uh, current key bindings. So hopefully you found this video interesting. I do like to base a lot of my key bindings off of things that sound similar, like command P for command palette, and things that will remind me of what they do, and sort of keep it Vim-like and sort of uh, focused on Vim, like the tabbing through panes and then manipulating everything with the, the keyboard. Keyboard-centric is the ideal, and I'm really hoping for more expanded Vim functionality in Obsidian so that I can do everything with a keyboard. Um, before we go, a quick note to the patrons who support this channel. Thank you very much for your support on this channel. Devin, Ed, Hyungjung, Leonardo, Brandon, Klaus, Paul, John, Joel, John, and Alberto. Thank you so much for being patrons of this channel and for everyone who donates on Buy Me A Coffee or PayPal and supporting the channel in general. Thank you so much for your support. And before I go, I'll catch you all in the next one.